today I'd like to talk a bit about identifying between healthy and unhealthy trees. So let's see. Let's pick this fellow right here. He's got uh, probably about a 20 percent. Uh, that's this fellow right here. Uh, 20 percent top certainly on the small side and he is probably 25 foot and perhaps taller but he is about two and a half inches in diameter at breast height which means that this guy is likely not going to do well uh, now here where he's essentially competing with nothing of value to me he's a I'm not worried about cutting him down but if there were better trees around and he was interfering in any way then he would definitely be uh, a takedown uh, right here we got another white birch and right here I think and he's got possibly close to a 30 percent crown but if you can if I can get the camera to focus in here he's got dead branches uh, and again what strikes me with him is right down I think I'm picking it up He's doing this epicormic sprouting. Right here. Get it. Right around here. And uh, that's those branches that are coming out. And this tree hasn't been suddenly released to sunlight. And he's doing sprouting right down around by the low down on the trunk. So that says to me that this tree is very, very likely under stress and struggling for survival and uh, again this is not a long-term keeper tree don't cut him down if he's not bothering anything but he's definitely not a keeper now this fella well he's practically just downright beautiful he's got uh, probably a 60% crown uh, no signs of uh, dead dying branches no signs of stress uh, yeah everything uh, now I would also go around the backside and and also check his trunk to make sure that there's no scars bark sloughing off uh, and so on but Right from here, he's looking in good shape. So this is a yellow birch. And by and large, if you look at this tree, he, he looks very good. What concerns me a bit about this fella is he's got uh, a fork right to the right there and he's got another one lower down which so far now well, there's a bit of a seam with that lower one so it certainly could be a future problem uh, for us he's a keeper because he's a desirable tree and a seed source so for us he's a do not cut uh, until he's at absolutely his very last legs but uh, again, if he was competing with a with a healthier red oak or something like that, uh, then I would seriously consider, you know, for two reasons: the red oak would be a slightly more desirable species here, and uh, because this fella is not he's not got the same strength of long-term survival. Now this is the stump of an eastern white cedar, one I cut down 
with the idea of using, and I did use them for for our, our small bridge construction, uh, which we have on video. Uh, and the crown, exterior-wise, he looked perfect. Uh, by the time I was a quarter of a way cutting through, cutting, cutting, <laughs> cutting through him, uh, the ants started to pour out of there. Uh, and as you can see, he's uh, not nearly as healthy as he appeared. So uh, I, I guess the lesson is healthy trees can in fact be unhealthy. But, yeah, oh, there's a nice one. Yellow birch. I like the shape of his crown. He looks very fine. But again, could there be something that's going on uh, that, that he's half hollow inside? It can happen. The thing is, if, if the crown is bad, you can be pretty definite that the tree is is not is not healthy. Uh, a healthy crown is not always definitive that the rest of the tree is healthy. This guy right there is definitely not well. Uh, he, I think. Our forester would say, he's toast. He certainly may ha hang on and struggle for another five or ten years, uh, but he's basically certainly on his way out. Now this uh, red maple, if we look at his crown, he looks just beautiful. Uh, certainly close to 50% crown, I would estimate, just quickly, but let's have a closer look. You can see the bulge in its older looking bark, where it gets kind of shaggy, and then there's a smooth section, and then there's another bulge and older looking bark, and then there's another smooth section. Focus on the camera. Uh, and so on. There's these intermittent, and I have no idea what is causing that, um, where a real forester probably could say exactly what's... Uh, again, I would be suspicious of this tree as something that's going to be around in another 50 years. Now this is a conifer, white spruce, and I'll be honest, he looks as healthy as anything. He looks in magnificent condition. Uh, I'd say he's Certainly a full 40% plus in terms of his crown to tree length ratio. And uh, no sign. These lower branches, that's, that's typical because uh, they were shaded out and no longer able to contribute uh, growth and sunlight uh, to the tree. So that's typical in conifers and in any of the deciduous also. If they're shaded too densely, those bottom branches will die. The ones up in the crown, without competition, they should be strong and healthy. This is an otherwise healthy looking uh, yellow birch. But you can see he's got a definite scar. Something has struck, peeled back the bark. Uh, certainly accidents happen during logging operations and, and skidding of trees. Um, again, this fella could probably last for quite a while, but that wood, that living, or what used to be living tissue just under the bark, that's a dead section right in there. And so 
he's compromised. Yeah, this is a look at that compromised yellow birch. Uh, you know, but his crown and everything is looking good. Uh, no significant, really no sign I can notice of dieback in the crown. Uh, he's a, basically a pretty good looking tree, except for that injury. Here's another yellow birch with an injury. In fact, he's got two. Again, uh, that's just this large limb that's coming up off this side. So he's definitely not a long-term keeper, but the rest of the tree looks pretty good. We have here a big, for this property, beautiful aspen, or more commonly poplar around here. Uh, crown looks great, uh, probably pushing 50%. Uh, no obvious, a uh, few lower dead branches, but nothing, nothing in the crown looks amiss. But we'll go in and have a closer look. Not at all sure what this is. It's a cavity of some sort. Uh, it's certainly a bit concerning. Let's move around a bit. Here we have bark that's sloughing off. I could just pull that off with my hand. Uh, and if I went around here I would see some further damage. So this tree, again, he one of those sneaky ones. If you just looked at the crown, you'd swear he was perfect. But when you look close, uh, he certainly isn't. But this fellow, I'd already decided he's going to be... Uh, a future cavity tree, so we're just going to let him stay exactly where he is, have a peaceful death, and then hopefully be a host for all kinds of little critters. And big ones, too. This is a otherwise healthy red maple. But you can see that the two um, branches have fundamentally grown together. So the one saving grace here is that both of these trees are staying fairly vertical with each other. If one of them was sticking out on a significant angle, this uh, this joint, this is this is weak almost right down to the roots. Um, so he's uh, he could be good for quite a while but he also has some issues. Otherwise the crown and that is all looking great. Now this guy is one of our very few red oaks that we have sure I get him in there. And uh, he was very badly suppressed. I have since, of course, have kind of got him freed up. And his, his crown, of course, is, is not great, but then again, he didn't have much of a chance. But what's bothering me is that it looks like a number of the finer branches have been broken and dropping and um, I mean, we're keeping him until the day he's he's gone, uh, because he's a important seed source for the property. But uh, I'm a little concerned about whether he's going to become the big robust tree that I'm hoping. So this is a white ash, 
and if you can see, hopefully it will show up in the camera, there's a discoloration and kind of a flattening of the bark. Uh, no explanation for it, uh, but certainly uh, a number of trees, white ash, uh, that I've cut down as part of a thinning that have this also had signs of interior decay. Can't say that's for sure, but it's a, a sign that I look for that a tree, a white ash, may not be healthy. This tree, the uh, spruce in the foreground here, this is not a healthy tree. In fact, this is a dead tree. And he's dead because Let's get a little closer. These are girdling marks. You basically take a chainsaw and do complete cuts uh, through the bark all the way around, uh, twice approximately a couple inches apart. And the reason you do that is because the tree is so ugly uh, and of no value in processing uh, that it's not worth actually cutting down or uh, cutting them down might uh, harm some of your regeneration that you have going on. So this guy is dead but by the time he is actually likely to fall uh, most of those limbs are probably going to be falling off. Uh, the wood will be soft and punky. And so there's a good chance that at that stage, he's not going to cause significant damage to uh, possible good trees near him. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for joining us. Uh, please, if you like this, uh, subscribe. Hit the little notification bell. Uh, comment, like really like to hear from you and stay safe catch you next time guys <laughs>